Hello and welcome back to another episode of What's in the Word with Evangelist Kevin Wagner and myself, Joshua Wagner. Last time we introduced the miraculous escape from prison that the Apostle Peter had in Acts chapter 12, and today we're going to see the rest of the story. And so, Dad, why don't you uh, begin with Acts chapter 12, uh, verse 11. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant girl named Rhoda came uh, to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the brothers about this, he said, and then he left for another place. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and, cross -exam and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Okay, so uh, just uh, Peter comes to himself, you know, thinking uh, at first that this was a vision and then realizes, wait a second, this is definitely not a vision. I am yeah. outside and uh, fully free. And in that, uh, in that awareness, he goes to apparently what is a familiar place of meeting for these early church apostles in Jerusalem. It is at the home of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, yeah. who is the gospel writer who wrote the book of Mark. Now, Dad, why don't you share a little bit about this location and situation sure. here? So this location, it's, it's not 100% sure in Scripture that this is accurate, right. but there are good reasons to believe that it very well may be accurate. Um, large meeting spaces like this for believers in the early church were very rare yeah. in Jerusalem because, of course, the Jews were antagonistic towards the early Christians. And um, so it's like for you to have this welcoming uh, place for them was a, uh, that could hold a lot of people like that was kind of, the, the places would have been pretty scarce. Yeah. And so there is thought that this place where the people were having the prayer meeting in Acts 12 was also the same pl place where the apostles and really 120 of the other believers uh, were waiting for the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. That yep. this may very well have been the upper room that uh, where the Holy Spirit fell in Acts 2. It's also, uh, may, it also may very well have been the place where Jesus and the, last, and the disciples had the Last Supper. Yes, that's right. It's amazing. So, you know, we don't know that for a fact, but we do know that this checks a lot of those boxes. Yeah, that's right. And, um, and this is certainly a familiar place to Peter. When he, upon his release from prison, this is the place he knew that he was supposed to go to where the believers would be there praying. And if you think about it, like Mark, so here's Mark. Yep. He's, <clears throat> uh, it's very clear that this is where Mark's, uh, Mark grew up. This yep. is his home in Jerusalem. It's kind of tantalizing to think that Mark, at the time of the Last Supper, he would have been probably in his young teens, maybe right. even like 12 years old or something. Right. He may have been like the guy who brought in some of the pass the lamb for the Passover right. meal or something like that. Like, again, speculation, but it's so cool to see these characters popping up throughout the Gospels and Acts and then even beyond Acts yeah. later on. And this Mark is is a pivotal character, of course, in Christianity. It's a funny thing that happens here. Uh, the <clears> servant <throat> girl, Rhoda, answers, or hears Peter's knocking on the outer door. And she recognizes Peter's voice, but rather than like open the door to Peter, like, hey, get out of the streets. Don't let the Roman guards find you. Yeah. Um, what does she do? She runs back and she tells the prayer group, guys, Peter's at the door. And they said, well, no, you're, you're out of your mind. That can't be the case. Hmm. And when she kept insisting it was him, they said, well, it must be his angel. 
But Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And it's it's just a funny development to me. It's like yeah. Rhoda's making Peter just stand at the door for who knows yeah. how long, waiting to be entered into the the, the house. And um, and it's sort of a a little bit of a funny part of this story. I mean, here's this young girl and she gets excited, you know, yeah. just like teenage girls get excited. And, yeah. and it's, it's really cool. It shows the humanity of the, of the people, you know, in these stories. And uh, so in, in a way it kind of makes sense, but it is kind of funny. But the, the thing that really gets me is what comes afterwards. Because yeah. here you have this group of, of believers. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. They love, love the Lord. Yes. You know, they're so faith-filled that they're praying to God for a miracle. Yeah. Let, Lord, do a miracle. Help Peter be released from prison. Right. And yet then, <laughs> when it seems like Peter is released from prison, they're trying to throw cold water yes. on this, the fire of this servant girl's right. uh, enthusiasm. It's yeah. like, it can't be Peter. He's in jail. And, and what's you know, funny is like we, we celebrate the, the prayers of these saints that led yeah. undoubtedly to the miraculous release of Peter from prison and the faith that was required for that. At the same time, there's like a lot of immaturity here. There's a lack of faith. Like uh, I know. you're praying for something <clears throat> and then you don't believe it when it happens. Right. Um, and so what, you know, what I see in this story is that, you know, God, he asks us to pray prayers of faith. Amen. He asks us to pray. Amen. He moves when we do. But even when our our faith is not, we would say, fully matured, even right. when we do not have, uh, you know, a perfect faith, God can and does still work. Absolutely, you know, in Mark, in the Gospel of Mark, um, there's a story about the man who's who brought his son, who was demon possessed, to the disciple, to Jesus. Yeah. He, Jesus wasn't there, so they get him run the disciples, and they couldn't cast the demon out, and and then Jesus came, and 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 he. Uh, and the man said to Jesus this, this really amazing statement. He says, yeah. Lord, I believe that you can do this. Yeah. Help my unbelief. That's right. And so it's like, this is what this story tells to me. Yeah. It, it says that these folks, they were believing God for a miracle. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. Bad news was when the miracle happened, they were, were kind of mystified yeah. about it. So I think for... For me, and I think probably for you too, Josh, is through the years, what God has done in terms of maturing my faith yeah. and, and my confidence in God is simply to be, I want to get to the, I'm at the place now where having seen God so, do so many miracles, like through the years, the mm -hmm. decades, mm -hmm. uh, overseas and also around North America, it's like now when God doesn't do a miracle, at least right away, I'm kind of surprised. Right. You know? Well, and, and, and I think that the words of the Father in Mark 9 are, are helpful because I think all of us, to a certain extent, we do believe God can do these things. But then there's that tension of also, you know, I do also have some unbelief that it won't happen. And so what, what I hope you be encouraged by, let your faith arise. You know, faith comes by hearing Amen. the word of God. Even as you're listening to this, we believe your faith is increasing. But even, you know, you don't have to wait for perfect faith in order to start praying prayers of faith. 100%. And 100%. God answered these prayers here. Yeah. Now, the um, the fallout from this is uh, is significant for these soldiers, right? There's yeah. a number of soldiers that allowed Peter to escape. In verse 19, it says, After Herod had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and he ordered that they be executed. This was the, the custom of the time. Right. If you allowed a prisoner to escape... Yeah. It was your life that would be, would be mm -hmm. uh, you know, the punishment for that. And this is important for us as we think back to the resurrection of Jesus. For those who say, oh, Jesus, you know, he was able to move the rock and he, he escaped when the soldiers were guarding his tomb or even the disciples came and they stole him away. The soldiers, if that is legitimately what have happened, what would have happened, this, they're, they're, they had just signed their own death certificate, yeah. as was the case here. You know, the, it takes way more faith to believe those faithless theories yes. than the, to believe that Jesus actually did rise from the dead. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think too, like, you know, you have, so I, I think it's like, okay, we should have, we should be more surprised, I believe, when God doesn't answer our faith-filled prayers yeah. for miracles and other things than when he does. That's right. And then also, 
I love it where Peter, it says here, there's that short phrase yeah. in verse 16, but Peter kept on knocking. Yeah. And I love that because, you know, Jesus says in um, the Sermon on the Mount, I believe it is, he says, uh, knock and the door shall be open to you. Seek and you'll find. Ask and it'll be given to you. you know? Yes. And so it's like, it's like Peter wasn't going to give up. Yeah. Peter, um, Peter wanted to, uh, he kept on knocking. And I think for us, that persistence is something that as believers we want to have. Yeah. Maybe God's miracle doesn't happen instantly. Yeah. Although a lot of times it does. But guess what? The persistence of prayer, faith-filled prayer, yep. standing on the word of God, standing on the promises of, of God in this book, uh, those things are things that we need to be persistent on. Well, and, and maybe Peter even was thinking about the parable of the persistent widow, which yep. Jesus himself told about exactly. the widow continuing to knock uh, on the door in the middle of mm -hmm. the night, just as Peter was here. Um, and it's a great reminder for us to keep on keeping on. All right, Dad, why don't you read this final section of Acts chapter 12? Then Herod went to Judea from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there a while. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him. Having secured the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king, they asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a god, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. <laughs> but the word of God continued to increase and spread. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. Okay, so um, look... This is quite a way to die. <laughs> it is. Herod, um, who had killed James, who had tried to kill Peter, now killed his soldiers, who had you know, yeah. allowed Peter to go, um, he's getting a bit of his own medicine. And mm. it's interesting. It says that on the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. And the people shouted, this is the voice of a god, not of a man. This is not the only time that we will find somebody in the book of Acts mm -hmm. being called a god. That's right. Um, in chapter 14, we will see that Paul and Barnabas are called the Greek gods of Zeus and Hermes. <clears throat> That's right. Yet they do not get killed for this. Why? Because they are <laughs> quick to correct the people. Absolutely. And to tell them, no, we are not gods. We serve the one true God. We are just men. Herod does no such thing. Herod welcomes the praise and the adulation that is to only mm. be given to the Lord. And immediately it says, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and died. Yeah. So this is a truly, uh, this is another miracle. It is. It sure um, is. But of course, it's a miracle <clears throat> that you hope never happens to you. Yeah. And it is a reminder for us to always deflect all praise, all Absolutely. attention yep. away from ourselves and onto the one to whom yeah. it belongs, that Jesus is worthy of the glory, to the praise of his glorious grace. Amen. And so we want to be sure that we are people that do not revel in our own pride or in the praises of man, but let us deflect that praise and attention onto the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that, you know, we are always careful, so, so careful when we're in these foreign countries, especially mm -hmm. in some of these cultures, especially Hindu cultures, they're they're very eager and quick to try to kind of worship, yeah. worship the, the, the holy men around them. Yes. And we are always needing to point their attention. No, this is not us. That's it's right. just Jesus. That's right. It's always just Jesus. Amen. And in light of this, um, the word of God continues to increase. It continues yep. to spread. And Paul and Barnabas, they are getting now ready to embark on their first missionary journey. That's right. And who are they taking with them? That same guy we were just talking about earlier. John yeah. also called That's right. Mark. Um, may we see from this story the miraculous power of God at work in releasing Peter from prison yeah. using supernatural means to mm -hmm. do so and doing it because of the power of prayer. Yeah. At the same time, let us also recognize that 
we are not the special people. We, it is not our, our prayers that are more powerful than other people's prayers. We do not revel in our own prayers. We revel in the ability of God to do it. And so when praise, if praise ever comes to us, let us be quick to point that praise back to Jesus so that we don't end up in a situation similar to that. <coughs> That's right. Amen. Well, this is a great story. And here ends the primary section of the first section of Acts that focuses on the life and the ministry of Peter. And next time we begin with the second section of Acts that is focused on the ministry of the Apostle Paul. And that is what's in the Word.